All right, you've done your work. You spend more time watching Sam Sulek videos on YouTube than you do talking to your own family. You wake up and eat nails without milk. In a cold shower, you've gone through your guts-inspired training montage and have them hot, chiseled abs they talk about on TV. You're an alpha male. You've built up an impressive resume since starting work on January 31st, 1997 in the original Final Fantasy VII and have since become the great soldier you promised yourself you'd be, not only in your own franchise, but also in gaming as a whole through your appearances in titles like Super Smash Bros. and Kingdom Hearts. 27 years in the business looking better than you ever have before, with the world at your fingertips. And one question on everyone's mind, Team Tifa, Team Aerith. Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming. I'm Chris Chappell. The second installment of the Final Fantasy VII Remake is out and Cloud is at the pinnacle of his game. Well over 40 and still looking 21. He's the unstoppable hero that power fantasy animes want you to be. Wielding his huge authority as he fights for the environment with his friends. It's no mistake that he's gotten so much attention from them ladies particularly his childhood crush Tifa and the new woman in his life, Aerith. Both of them with an eye on the prize, Cloud's heart. How should Cloud, a high value man who spent his life as a free bird, decide on what Oprah Winfrey calls the most important decision you will ever make? Who to settle down with? Will it be Tifa, the childhood crush you promised you'd always protect? Someone who has shared life experiences with you and enjoys the same things you do, both of you having been through the same sorts of struggles, or Aerith, the foreign and mysterious flower girl you bumped into, polite and pristine. She introduces you to her mom as her bodyguard and loves feeling on them biceps, her aura radiating a more traditional element of femininity that many men would argue they are seeking today, at least if you give any credence to the rise of podcasts like at whatever and fresh and fit that in their own view exposes the problems associated with what they refer to as modern women and push for a more traditional view on gender roles. These views that can generally be understood to be tied more to the red pill and men's rights movement would say that Cloud needs someone like Aerith to help support him from the back as he takes on the demons of providing for the household. However, a more feminist view on the matter would say that Cloud should value Tifa, a strong, independent woman, willing to get up close and personal with him on managing the challenges of life. In the modern economy, a two-income household is becoming more and more necessary for a happy life as cost of living continues to rise. And a strong man would certainly need a strong woman by his side. Power couples like multi-millionaire business owners Leela and Alex Ramosi further the point that it's better to stick with someone who shares your values and is willing to walk with you side by side through the fire. This camp would view Tifa as their clear choice. But first, before we consider both sides, let's set the playing field so we know what we're really talking about. The Final Fantasy series, like most elements of gaming culture, was born in Japan, with Tifa seeming to be represented as the local girl, whereas Aerith, with her pale skin and green eyes, is the clear stand-in for a foreign beauty. Perhaps then it's telling that the Japanese game developers gave the foreigner many of the elements of femininity that Westerners believe they'd, perhaps a bit stereotypically, find in Japan. The same group of people that raised the banner for Team Aerith, a Western woman in-game, don't actually attribute any of her values to Western women. The entire appeal of her then for gamers all across the world is the element of distant purity that she represents, and not where she's from. In this way, we can go past simply analyzing the physical elements and fetishizations of these characters and get into the internal conflict they represent to the Chad that is Cloud. Do you stick with the girl who's been with you on the way up, even if she isn't perfect? Or do you give in to the advances of the beautiful flower girl and her perceived angelic beauty? For most men, these questions may seem like distant mountain peaks they may never reach. To hold the attention of not one, but two women may almost feel like a fantasy. Well, that's the real Final Fantasy. Years of trolling on the internet have left us weak with the strong stench. But for a true top G like Cloud, he may have a third option. 
where, like so many other rich and attractive bachelors, he never settles down with one woman, as so many followers of Andrew Tate believe is the way. The developers of Final Fantasy knew our viewers would raise this concern, and that's why they added Andrew Tate in the game, through his persona as Rude. Rude, another top G, stands in the way of Cloud's path towards Chadhood. He too has a crush on Tifa, and says he cares about keeping Aerith safe. Aerith tells Cloud that Rude isn't a bad man, however he does present a challenge in the philosophical battle for love. While there's a certain allure in stringing both women along, in the end, with someone like Andrew Tay, I mean Rude, on the scene, you might miss your chance and end up alone forever, losing both girls. What do love doctors say about what high-value men want or potentially need? Psychotherapist and relationship expert Esther Perel states, Men in power often seek partners who validate their success. But true compatibility is found when both individuals share mutual respect and common goals. Our initial impression of this would be that Tifa, then, would be the one that Cloud should be with. Perhaps the best and most mature path is not looking down on what is familiar and getting carried away by what's new and exciting, but finding the beauty in the things you already know. Through their shared love of saving the environment and shared history, Cloud and Tifa can help each other heal from old wounds, and Cloud can value what is real over what he may at first see as the ideal. But is it fair to say that Aerith doesn't share the same goals as Cloud? Yes, Aerith met Cloud at a point in his life when he was already a success, but with her gift of foresight, which is part of her relevance in the franchise, and her interest in helping Cloud reach his goals from a supportive role, if not headlong jumping into battle with him, is she not working towards Cloud's goals as well? The Team Aerith folk would urge that Cloud should be with Aerith, because she's the type of person who urges Cloud to save her rival Tifa from the evil Don Corneo's clutches, even though Tifa herself told Cloud to leave. And it is precisely because she is such a rare find that she has value. She's not simply an ideal, but a real possibility that has come into Cloud's life. Furthermore, Tifa had her chance. Cloud has simped for Tifa long enough, and the promises he made when he was young shouldn't keep him chained to the past. Aerith knows the future, and she isn't afraid to fight for what's hers. The silverback gorilla of dating that is Cloud has his work cut out for him. Thanks to fellow YouTuber Gamer's Little Playground, you can watch compilations of every flirting scene with both characters from an earlier reboot of Final Fantasy VII and create your own opinion about who's the love of Cloud's life. Regardless, we here at Deep Thoughts While Gaming ask you to consider when you, in your journey, reach true Cloud status. Who will you want next to you at the end of the road and what love really means to you? Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember, whether you're arguing over Tifa versus Aerith, Rey versus Asuka, the answer is clear. Just Monica. Which you can learn about in this video about Doki Doki Literature Club. And hit that join button to support Deep Thoughts While Gaming, because video game characters will never love you, but I can.